Hey, what's up? Joe in Vegas back with another review. Uh, Tesla. Went to go see Tesla last night. Tesla is doing, I think, five full nights uh, residency at House of Blues here in Vegas, which is pretty surprising, honestly. Um, I think I've seen them last time. I've seen Tesla three or four times. Uh, I think the last time I saw him was actually here at House of Blues. It's not a big venue, but it's a, it's, it's a decent-sized venue. Um, for them to do five nights, it's it's impressive. It's honestly impressive. It's uh, kind of a testament to how strong that 80s metal brand still is and how some of these bands like Tesla that are so underrated. I think Tesla might be the most underrated. Maybe Tesla or Cinderella um, band from that era. That just, they get love from the fans, but they never broke through. They never got to, you know, you have Motley Crue doing, you know, worldwide stadium tours and Def Leppard and Guns N' Roses. And these these guys broke through on such a massive level and they never looked back. It just got bigger and bigger. And the divide between where someone like Guns N' Roses in and where Tesla is is so large. Don't get me wrong. Guns N' Roses is a much better band than Tesla. Um but not by the divide that where it is today. Um, they have a lot more hits, a lot more songs, a lot more albums, a lot more personality. But it, you shouldn't take that away from Tesla. Tesla is a fantastic band with a, a bunch of great songs. Just like I said, Tesla, Cinderella. There's a there's a bunch of them. You know, back then it feels like they were like A, B, and C bands. You know, there was the Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue were the A's. Tesla's and Cinderella's were B, and then like that C level was like. I don't know, Junkyard or XYZ or those kinds of like sleazy Hollywood bands that never kind of had maybe one hit pop out, two hits, but never really left the Sunset Strip. Cinderella's in the middle. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why they, there's such a big divide between, like I said, where Guns N' Roses and Molly Crew is and where Tesla and Cinderella is. But anyway, it's still a treat. They're still doing five nights at House of Blues in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Resort and casino so i don't want it to sound like it's a sad story for tesla because they are always packing it in and clearly there's still a lot of demand for them and it's awesome and they deserve it so let's get into the set list from last night uh he did say that they're going to change it up every night a little bit because i think they know that you know they're playing to the diehards really maybe i'd say 80 percent of the crowd are probably diehard tesla fans that are going to see at least two or three if not all five of the shows so i think they change up the set list he said they're going to change it up a little bit every night which means certain songs were left off um a big one for me was left off which i was disappointed but let me get to it uh lady luck modern day cowboy hanging tough time to rock heaven's trail no way out Miles Away, which I think is one of their best songs. I love that song. Fucking rocks, man. That, the guitars and the riffs on that song are, are great, great, great. Changes. Uh, they did an Aerosmith cover, SOS, Too Bad. Call It What You Want, great song. Love Me. What You Give is probably their most underrated song. I mean, you know, they're known for love song, but uh, What You Give is oof. It's so well written. It's so the tempo of that song. It starts slow. It gets heavier. Jeff singing on it is like it cuts you right in the soul, man. It's such a good song. It's such a good live song too, because it's a it's a real sing along. And uh, that song's such a treat. I, I think they should put that pretty much at the. I would I would almost close with that song because it's it's so good. Um, Edison's medicine, man at a time, classic Tesla. Uh, then love song, which is. As as good of a song. I mean, back in the day, that's what I'm saying. Like, back in the day, if my memory serves me correct, you know, Love Song was right there with Paradise City. And it was right there with, with these other bands that were, at the time, the top-level 80s bands. Tesla were right there with them. And then, like I said, some of these guys went off to play stadiums forever, and some of them kind of drifted back, which doesn't seem fair, but that's life. That's just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, they didn't, keep putting out stuff but i don't think that's what it is it's management i'm not i'm not sure but it's interesting how how the cookie kind of crumbled for some of these bands i could tell you i think tesla should have been on that motley Crue, def leppard poison tour i mean i said it in my review i love joan jett i have a ton of respect for her and what she's done but she didn't belong uh, as the fourth one on that on that stadium tour it should have been a tesla or a cinderella or rat or one of those kinds of bands um that 
that deserved that spot, in my opinion, or fit that spot, not deserved, fit that spot. I think Tesla would have made such a great – if that show would have been Tesla, Poison, Motley Crue, and Def Leppard, that would have been a hell, much better show. Anyway, uh, so Love Song, ah, it's as good as it gets, man. The guitars, the singing, the emotion. Eh. Love Song is a perfect song. Then they did a little Susie cover. Then they went off stage for 30 seconds, came back, and did Signs. Um, also, Signs is one of those – uh, I'm pretty sure it's a cover song. One of those ones where the cover is much better than the original or, or took over the original in, in, in popularity. And that's it. It felt like a pretty quick show. He didn't. There wasn't a ton of talking in between. My biggest gripe on the show was that in Play Paradise, um, I, I kind of recall in my head that when I've seen them in the past, they, they don't always play Paradise. I love Paradise. I think it's just as good as, uh, as Love Song. Um, I'm sure they'll play it over the week. If they're, you know, adding and taking away songs. Uh, a friend of mine who's a diehard fan, he mentioned that they never played Lady Luck. And I think he said Miles Away, which I love Miles Away. So I'm happy they played that. But overall, it's a great show. Jeff sounds fucking amazing, you know. he he's At one point, I was trying to see if he was lip syncing because, man, he sounds so good. He sounds so good. Um they rock, man. They bring it. They bring it. That's that's the best way I can describe that show. They have the songs in their arsenal, and they show up, and they deliver them, and they give the fans exactly what you want. If you are a Tesla fan, you are going to be so happy with this show anywhere you see them because they are spot on what you expect them to be, how you expect them to sound, how you even expect them to look. You know, he looks like, and again, my memory's shoddy over the years, but I recall like... He, he drove like a tractor in Sacramento. These are like down-home guys, and they look like it. He looks like he fell off a tractor and just picked up a microphone and just was given this gift from God. And they have them, the songs to back up, the talent, and it's just an all-around great show. I loved it. On a scale of, of uh, 1 through 10, I'm going to give it a 9-2. I think it's that good. If they played Paradise, it might have got them up to 9-3, 9-4. It's just that's me. That's my personal preference. But... You know, uh, tickets were pretty cheap. I, uh, I I keep saying this. Uh, tickets are becoming a big part of going to shows, the prices. So I'm going to try and talk about them a little bit. What I did was I went on StubHub. I waited. So House of Blues, if you're going, it's really the venue sucks. This, it just the, the GA floor is a pain in the ass. You're, you're pretty low. It's packed in. There are these big beams throughout the floor. You half the time you're standing on staircases. Um, you're very, you know, anytime a floor is flat, you know, and you're standing behind someone, you're literally staring at the back of their heads. I don't love that venue. It's very claustrophobic. There's no windows. There's one door in and out. Um, I never loved that venue. So I always said to myself, when I go to house of blues, I'm going to spend the extra money and get a VIP seating. And I think a lot of people started saying that's because there used to be like 10 tables. Now I noticed there were like 20 tables. I went on StubHub and I waited till a couple days before and those tickets for VIP seating that used to be three something came down to, I got mine for 140 plus fees. I saw a few hours before the show, there were some that were down to 90 plus fees. So it gets pretty affordable. I think I saw the general admission a few hours before the show was down to 40, 50 bucks. So it's a little bit more to get the tables, but I think very worth it. You have a bird's eye view. You have plenty of room. You're not packed in. So that's what I did. I would suggest... If anybody's going to the show, get yourself a VIP seat. You got a waitress. You got everything you need there. Um, and try to wait to as close as the show. Watch StubHub. Watch those sites. Wait for the tickets to come down. But that's my review. Great show. I absolutely loved it. I, I might even go back. They got four more shows here. One's tonight. I'm going to see Stevie Nicks, so that won't work. But I think they're playing Wednesday, so maybe I'll check it out again. We'll see. Thanks for listening. If you've seen them, if you're at these shows, leave comments. I always try to read them. Subscribe, subscribe. If you like this channel, help me build up a little bit. And uh, thanks for listening. I'll see you at the next show. Bye-bye.